What is up everyone? Um, welcome back to yet another Introducing Songs with Lucas Bitar. I'm your host, Lucas Bitar. And uh, if you're new here, this series is, um, I like to talk about songs that inspires me. So I do my best to like break down the lyrics, break down like the, the chord progression and stuff like that. And uh, I hope you like it. Um, for this one, I'm also doing it in English. It's uh, just like to keep the momentum going because of the of the last episode, the the last episode that I recorded, it was uh, it was pretty fun actually. <laughs> do the entire thing in English, um, so I'm gonna try to do this one again in English, and I uh, hope it comes out all right. And um, and it's also a way um, to thank you guys for all like the the, the new subscribers, uh, all of the positive comments you guys are so kind and uh i really appreciate that and um yeah i think that's it um so let's get into the episode um we're gonna talk about another the warning song uh this one's called black holes which is <laughs> insane because of, of a couple of reasons that i'm gonna uh point out here uh, just to give a bit of context uh time wise uh, Black Holes was written by Paulina, uh, the drummer, and also she also sings in the band, when she was 13 years old, <laughs> which is insane. It's uh, uh, and it, it kind of shows us um, how uh, well read these ladies are uh, since they were little. I mean, 13 years old, and you're gonna and you write this. And in my humble opinion, <laughs> this is her Sistine Chapel, and. Uh, because it's just out of this world for a kid of like with 13 years old, <laughs> write this. Um, also, uh, it's pretty important to point out that English is not their first language, it's their second language. And they, they know it <laughs> better than, than most of us, <laughs> which is awesome. And uh, it's kind of funny because there's also this interview where Paulina talks about fighting with the producer over the word the bass that the guy was like i have no idea what the word means and i have no idea if that is that if that is that is in fact a word and she says yeah it is uh i've read on books and stuff like that so it's kind of funny the the interview uh she kind of teaches the guy who's american a word that he had no idea existed which is pretty amazing <laughs> uh so um this song is on their first album, the uh, 21st Century Blood. Uh, great album. I uh, love all of the songs there. Uh, they released in 2017. Um, but the version that we're going to look at today is from a private acoustic show that they uh, did it in UK um, last year, 2023, which is uh, on YouTube. You can find like the, the entire thing, which I totally recommend. It's awesome. It's like the rawest version possible of all the all, all of their songs that they performed there it's um i think it's a concert that they did before the actual concert they were gonna play at the same venue um so it, it was kind of like a private thing which is pretty cool um so uh without any further ado let's get to this song and uh, i'll try to make it, break it down a few things and uh i hope you, you guys enjoy it All alone in an alleyway Staring at my face The reflections of broken bottles Didn't know I had these many scars I thought I had won All of my different battles But I'm corrupt, I got nothing left So all my love trying to forget Ignore your calls and I throw the phone away Please believe me when I say <laughs> This is uh, this is something else. I mean, she's playing the piano. She's killing the sing the singing. It's uh, it's it's awesome. I mean, uh, so um, just uh, at the beginning right there, like um, all alone in the alleyway, staring at my face in the reflections of broken bottles. 
it's um, like the lyrics open with a sense of, of uh, vulnerability and self-reflection. Um, it kind of shows um, someone uh, grappling with the uh, like the unwelcome return of past struggles, uh, like their flaws, also their vulnerabilities. They believed that they that uh, were conquered, which apparently it was not, and. Uh, so it, it, it's a pretty interesting song, especially for a 13 year old <laughs> to write. Uh, and also, so we have like, but I'm corrupt. I got nothing left. I spent all my love trying to forget, ignore your calls and throw the phone away. But believe me when I say. So these lines, they carry uh, a powerful message. It kind of highlights uh, the inner turmoil of um, wanting to move forward while uh, simultaneously feeling stuck in the past. So it, it's kind of, she's trapped by the weight um, of the past actions or relationships. Um, we can see these lyrics um, in very different uh, perspectives, um, but it uh, kind of sounds like a plea for understanding and the, and the desperate need to be heard is, is pretty palpable, right? Um, so like I said, it's, uh, it's, n it's, uh, worth noting that while this song is often, uh, interpreted through the lens of addiction, which I, which I think makes a lot of sense. Um, that's what I read on YouTube comments and stuff like that. Never heard of them talking about that song, but I might have to research something, but, uh, I'm, I'm trying to kind of see from my perspective here. So like the themes of inner turmoil and uh, self-destruction, struggle to overcome negativity can resonate with anyone facing personal challenges as well. So it's not about only addiction, which we can definitely see it where where this come from, like the, the reflections of broken bottles. You might think like an alcoholic or something like that, but in my opinion, I don't think that's what she's talking about. I'm, I'm actually thinking it's kind of a, even though she was 13 when she wrote it, it might be from her own experience. So um, let, let's keep going. Don't hold on, don't hold on, don't hold on to me. Don't hold on, don't hold on, I got nothing left to give. chorus right um so she's uh it's uh it's it's again like a plea like to not hold on it's a uh, a desperate cry for release letting go uh acknowledging that they have nothing left to offer and that their uh the presence only brings more pain and uh i've got nothing left to give it's uh this words uh, resonates with anyone um, who has ever felt emotionally exhausted or drained. You know, like you try so hard, you, you did your best, and uh, it wasn't enough. So that's kind of that's the kind of feeling that I get when I listen to her singing that, and also the way she expresses uh, all of the lyrics. You can feel the pain. It, it, it's, I mean, like I said, they they've mastered the the, the craft, which is awesome and uh, just a little bit more on the chorus it's uh, like all the things I used to hold so close they burn and the love they used to shine so bright was shattered like a satellite that's pretty powerful as well um, she's kind of creating a visual of something precious um, now uh, broken beyond repair um, kind of leaving only like fragments of what it used to be um, 
which I, I think we all can relate to that. Um, something that used to, um, um, something that used to make you make you feel good, and now it, it doesn't anymore, which is um, pretty recurring, I think, in our lives. And um, and she kind of um, this um, she can she emphasizes that feeling with the meta the, with the metaphor of a black hole, which is um, which represents all. Of, represents um, the all-consuming void that swallows everything, including their love and light. Uh, th th it, it, it's a pretty powerful lyric. And uh, let's, let's keep going to the verse now. And I know that you try to stay, but my awful ways You'll never overlook And all the things that hurt me They got no remedy And this for hurting you too Cause I'm corrupt, I got nothing left Spent all my love trying to forget Ignore your calls and I throw the phone away Please believe me when I say Just uh, real quick, this uh, last verse. So um, the recurring theme of corruption and having nothing left um, kind of underscores a sense of uh, emotional bankruptcy. Um, she's also indicating a history of pain and uh, and failed attempts at healing by admitting um, to have spent all her love trying to forget, uh, which is uh, pretty um, pretty deep, right? And, uh, and then again, we have the chorus. Um, so before that, let me just try to break it down, like the, uh, the chord progression and stuff like that, um, if you guys are interested at all in this. So <clears throat> the song is uh, B flat minor. Um, I'm using the capo here, so it's easier for us to finger the chords. Um, I'm gonna talk about like if they were the actual chords, like a C and not a, not a C sharp. But it starts like this. So it's basically C, and then we have G, A minor, and F. It's a pretty common uh, chord progression. Uh, the, <laughs> at the top of my mind, I can uh, think of uh, uh, Wherever You Will Go by The Calling. <laughs> that's pretty much it uh, so that's pretty much it for the verse and then the the pre-chorus and the chorus are the same thing um, so so it's F major G major and a minor which is um, actually the B flat minor here because of the capo um, so it, it's pretty much the That's pretty much it, the entire song. It's uh, pretty st straightforward. Um, but then again, um, the warning, they're not about like flashy stuff or anything like that. Their their idea is to come across a point. Uh, they're pretty focused on the lyrics. Um, and uh, 
and how to give it to the audience um, the feeling they want they want the audience to feel, which they do it perfectly, and that's awesome. That's why I love them, and that's why I can't get enough of them. <laughs> so uh, let's keep going. And uh, all right. Hold on, I got nothing left to give. Cause I keep on coming, begging for more. And I'm slowly falling, crashing below. And the things I used to hold so close, they burn. And the love that used to shine. I just love this section, uh, especially because of how Danny is looking at Paulina. It's like a proud, proud like her little sister singing so so goddamn well, and uh, giving it all that all everything that she has right there. It's the first song that they play on the set, and uh, Paulina even sh says that she hasn't played the piano for four months or so. And uh, they also point out that they're gonna play songs that they haven't played in a while. And then she comes on and plays like this, which is insane. And uh, yeah, I just love the way uh, Danny is looking at her. Uh, it's such a great moment. And uh, just uh, to talk a, a little bit more about the lyrics, like the lines about the love that used to shine bright, um, now being shattered like satellites, um, highlights um, like the collateral damage of their emotional state. And also the, well, she says like the, the, the venom starts to swallow me whole. It's, um, it's a powerful metaphor for the, um, for the toxic effect of their intern, inner turmoil. Um, because it, it's not affecting only them, but, um, but all the, all those around them, right? Cause when you're not feeling okay, it's, uh, it's not only bad for you, but everyone around you so it's kind of so it's just kind of saying don't hold, don't hold on to me it's like i'm 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 not doing good so it's uh so it, you gotta let me go so i can kind of work on myself and stuff like that and um so it, yeah yeah so like the repeated line uh of don't hold on serves as, as both a uh, warning and the plea, like urging others to let go for their own sake, um, which is which is which it is uh, it's pretty interesting um, because I, I'm gonna get into that in a few minutes, um, and also let, let me just continue here because that's a pretty good line that's coming up. So yeah, the line I was waiting for was, uh, I surrender in my defeat, which is, uh, this line gets me every time. It's uh, such a powerful and painful way to say um, you can no longer carry this pain. Um, so I surrender in my defeat. That's, uh, that's, that's pretty tough to um, acknowledge um, by yourself and uh, and that that's what she's doing here in this song which is fantastic and also it's kind of funny looking at the video here she's kind of waiting for them for the for daniela and uh, alejandra to uh, start singing the back vocals 
because they haven't played in a while, they don't remember. So she's kind of, she kind of loses her concentration. I, I must say there, but she never misses a beat, which is awesome. Uh, but she's kind of cueing them to say, "Hey, the, the <laughs> where's the backing vocals?" And uh, it's pretty funny. I mean, what a song, what a fucking song, oh my god, and um, just to sum up here, um, it, like, she doesn't shy away from uh, portraying the, uh, the darkness and pain, but um, there's also a glimmer of hope in the uh, recognition of the problem and the desire to protect others, which is pretty important. I, I think that's, I think that might be like the, the central message of the song. Um, like even though we're going through a hard time and uh, we're struggling with our inner turmoils and stuff like that, um, we're actually acknowledging that, which is pretty um, hard, I think. Um, and also, the desire to protect others. So that's why she's saying do ho, do ho, me, which is awesome. And um, overall, uh, Black Holes beautifully, beautifully captures the, the complexities of uh, human emotions and, the, and also the pain of letting go. It, it, um, it reminds us that sometimes uh, freedom lies in surrender or grasp um, on a situation or even a person when, when, I mean either or um, no matter how painful it may feel in the moment so I think we we've all been there right so you're going through a, a tough time maybe a relationship you can you just can't get over it and uh, the best thing you can do is actually letting it go like sometimes we don't have control over situations so uh, in a very stoic way um, we can only control the things that we can control so for the things that we cannot we might as well just uh, let it go and this um, and we don't have to carry uh, this weight on our shoulders right it's um, it's a pretty powerful song and the way she's singing it we can we can definitely feel it that uh, it's it gets her as well like it's a pretty deep song and uh, I totally get it where people say that she's talking about addiction because um, I can kind of see myself on the other side of the addiction like having people with addiction around me and how they behave which is pretty much um, like she's saying in the song like they're they're trying but they only cause pain and uh, it they struggle with relationships um, they they pretty much push people away um, because of their addiction which it's uh, it's really painful but uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people can relate to that and uh, not only the addiction part but always but also um, on the on the challenges that we have in our lives and uh, and man what a song uh, I think I think that's it guys um, I hope you guys enjoyed it um, uh, let me know what, what you guys think if 
if it's your first time here and uh, you watch the entire thing, thank you so much. Uh, don't forget to leave your comment, uh, subscribe for more. Um, I might mix it up like uh, having episodes in, in English and in Portuguese. I don't know, I'm still thinking about it, but I just feel like when it, when it comes to the warning, it's, uh, I don't know, it, it, I, can reach, I can reach like a wider audience, which is awesome. And uh, I'm really thankful for all of the positive comments. You guys are awesome. And, uh, and that's it. And uh, I'll see you guys uh, on the next one. Thank you so much.